What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally going to be installing my Bilstein slash H&R sports spring suspension on my F30-335i. The last video we did, we did a full DIY install on how to assemble your suspension basically from scratch. So now that we've got everything ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and install it on the car today. So let's get to it. All right guys, so I figured I would do a quick measurement of the rear. Currently we are at about 26th and an eighth from floor to fender. All right, so now looking at the front, we're at about 26 and a half inches from floor to fender. So I talked about the suspension setup that I decided to go with in my last video, but I'll kind of go into a little bit more today. So what we're putting on the car is going to be Bilstein V8 dampeners and H&R Sport Springs. So I've had lots of different suspension setups over the years with different cars, whether it be springs, coilovers, air suspension, I've experienced all of it. Um, but with this particular car being uh, this my, my daily driver, it needs to be something practical, it needs to be something that's comfortable. It needs to be something that even my girlfriend can drive, so it needs to not be very low. So that kind of takes me to you know why I've decided to do this. Um, coilovers don't seem to make sense because A, the cost, and B, I'm not tracking the car or anything. Um, yeah, it'd be great to have, you know, even on a daily driver, but uh, I don't find that it's necessary for what I'm trying to do with this thing. Um, air suspension, I experienced that, although air is extremely awesome, it's great, very practical that is going to be the most expensive option and that was not not the winning ticket so uh, decided to do the Bilstein and the H&R obviously springs would have been the cheapest thing to do but H&R um, sport springs are kind of a moderate drop it's not very it's not nothing crazy it's very conservative but there's been a lot of back and forth on you know people's opinions whether or not it's you know good to just run springs by itself because a lot of people were complaining about the, the harsh ride quality and the common denominator from everyone is that if you add Bilstein B8 dampeners to the H&R Sport Springs, the ride quality is really, really great. So that's kind of why we decided to do this. So here's how the car looks one last time. So this is, again, regular just BMW M Sport suspension, non-adaptive. So I think... The drop was 0.7 in the rear, so nothing crazy, and I think it was 1.4 in the front. Again, not very crazy low, but still functional. I already scraped the front lip as it is anyway, so I think it'll be good. And here's Tim. All right, commence install. To do first is remove. We're starting in the front. We're going to pull these little covers off so we have access to the top hats on both sides. This one we're going to have to take off this plastic piece here. So need to remove. I think these are 10 millimeter. Just unscrew them, and then this whole piece will pop out. Now this thing will pop up. Both sides. All right. So we pull those covers off, and the driver's side has these two little plastic rivets here. So we need to pull up the middle um, stem and then pull the whole thing out. This side just has the one back there. And then we can just leave these hanging here, just push them to the side. And then we can start loosening. So the driver's side, we need to uh, remove this fork bolt. And then we'll see these three. Same thing with the other side. So these three top mount bolts here, one, two, three, are going to be 16 millimeters. If you happen to have an X drive, you might have five. Uh, the top hats are universal, regardless if it's an X drive or um, a regular rear wheel drive. So just go ahead and loosen these. We're not gonna actually take this off till we're ready. And then the Torx is a E18 external Torx. All right, so that's loose. All three of these are loose. Starting on the driver's side, 
need to pull these little brake lines off of the bracket here. And then there's a nut right here. This is a 16 millimeter that we need to remove. And then on the side, this is an 18 millimeter that we need to remove. Here's way bar link. Um, we'll have to take one of these sides off. I think we can do it up here at the top. So this is probably a 16 millimeter. You can confirm that. And then we should be, yeah, it's a 16 mil. And then we should be okay to, um, what else do we need to remove? Uh, you just pry that apart. Yeah. Uh, that comes All right, a little spindle tool to pry right. the spindle apart. Yeah. All right, so to remove the sway bar end link, you'll need a 16 millimeter open end and then a T30 to hold down the actual bolt here, the screw, because otherwise it'll spin. Additionally, you want to make sure you get your headlight leveling sensor off as well, right there. So I think we'll remove it down here. And this sway bar end link, we're gonna have to transfer over to the new suspension. So, so that's basically what we're doing here. We're using the 16 millimeter on the nut and then the T30 on the screw. All right, so for this headlight leveling sensor, I'll put that back up there so we can see here. All right, so one side has a 10 millimeter screw and one side has kind of like a squared off bolt. Uh, we used a 3 8 inch to hold it, and then we unscrewed the 10 millimeter. So then we can just let that hang. And then we need to undo this bracket. This bracket is tied in here with the 16 and the 18, so I think we can actually leave these brake lines on here. We'll see. All right, so we just took this bolt out right here. So again, this is a 18 millimeter on one side and a 16 millimeter nut. So let's put that screw looks like our new ECS tuning kit has new bolts so we might utilize those instead and for the brake line bracket it's just compression fitted in here so we can just pull that push that out of the way and now we need to spread the spindle apart back here so there's like a little cutout I'm not sure if you can see that there's a cutout right here and basically I have a spindle a spindle spreading tool this is Schwaben. Um, bought this on Amazon, I think, for like ten dollars, ten dollars or something. So you put this in, and then you turn it, and it'll open the spindle just enough for us to actually remove the strut. All right, so the spindle spreader is in there. We're gonna leave it like that. We leave the tool in there like that. It'll keep that seated open. We're ready to remove those top nuts, and then this whole assembly will come out and then we're going to swing it out. So you guys saw how we did that. It helps to have two people when you do this. I basically put my foot on the brake caliper and pushed it down far enough for Tim to pull it out of there without hitting the fender. Also use a microfiber towel. Everything looks good there. So we did end up releasing um, these two brake lines from the bracket just to give us a little bit more slack. Suspender. All right, here's the new one versus the old. That's and uh, you can already tell one's lower than the other a little bit. I'm sure the spring will settle a little bit more. Installing the new one. Hey buddy, how far does it go? Until it stops? Yeah. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna pull this spindle spreader out. <coughs> to lock it into place. Done. The Tim's already got that one in there. So the top hat you need to align. So these these two little nubs on the actual top hat. So right there, that fits right into this hole. 
And then we can go ahead and put our screws in. All right, so we're reinstalling. One other thing to note, you'll see this green weather stripping or weather gasket, whatever you want to call it. Make sure that's still in there. Sometimes it gets stuck up here. Sometimes it comes out with the um, strut and everything. So as long as you have that in place, you should be good to go. All right, one other thing to note, when you, if you are buying the ECS tuning kit, um, it's universal for an X-Drive or a real drive car. So like I said, the top hat is a little bit different. It's got five, um, five screws instead of three, but you can still use this. Just make sure that you use the bolts that are supplied in the kit because these are actually 14 millimeter and the, the thread is different um, on this one. So on the top hat. So we're gonna tighten this down a little bit and then we'll do torque specs after we're all buttoned up. All right, so we got all seated in there. We went ahead and put the 18 millimeter bolt and the 16 millimeter nut back on. Put our brake lines back on. You want to make sure this bracket is in between the spindle. That's how it held this into place. Tim is putting the headlight uh, sensor back on, and then we'll put the swing arm. Spin, uh, swing arm. What is that? What's that called again? Uh, and sway bar. Sway bar and link back on. Torque spec for the 18 millimeter bolt and 16 millimeter nut is 32.5 foot pounds. All right, so these top three top mount screws are gonna to be torqued to 41.5 foot pounds. And then the center is gonna be 47 foot pounds. The E socket there is also 41.5 foot pounds. All right, so we're tightening the top and the countersink one, counter screw. Um, the Allen is a six millimeter and then the nut is a 19. And then again, we're torquing that down to 47 foot pounds. All right, once you've got everything torqued to spec, you go ahead and replace your little cover here and then that little plastic cover there and this side should be good. All right, so there's the final product on the driver's side. Everything's back into place. And we're gonna move on to the passenger side. Process is the exact same on the passenger side. And uh, we'll come back to you on the rear. Also, one additional thing, the passenger side, the only difference here is there is no headlight leveler. So one less thing for us to take off. Mm -hmm.